Hello everyone, my name is Mackenzie Noor and I'm here with Abby Rainier. Today we are joined by special guest Dan Povenmire. Thanks for joining us today. Sure. For those who are watching and may not know who Dan Povenmire is, he is an American animator, writer, director, producer, and voice actor, widely known for co-creating Disney's Emmy Award winning series and a personal childhood favorite of mine. Phineas and Ferb, in which he is also the voice of Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz. He also co-created Disney's Milo Murphy Law and Hamster and Gretel, and has worked on other critically acclaimed animated series, including Family Guy, SpongeBob SquarePants, The Simpsons, Rocco's Modern Life, and Hey Arnold. His fame continues to grow on TikTok, where he often interacts with young artists, giving them advice and encouragement. And tonight, you will be giving a lecture here at Miami University titled, Unleashing Imagination, the Power of Creativity. Is there anyone in your life that stands out to you who has inspired you to embrace your imaginative ideas and creativity? Well, I was, I was very lucky to have parents that, that saw at an early age that I could really draw and, and, and thought of that as something that I could do for a living. Because a lot of my friends uh, in animation, a lot of them, like, their parents like disowned them, wouldn't pay for college if they were going to an art school and stuff, and they really had to fight against their parents' you know, belief that that wasn't a real thing that they would be able to do in order to get a career. And my parents were very inspiring to me about it. And I, I think my dad had drawn when he was young but had never been really encouraged to do it. And so, so he was like, I think, I think you could do this. I, I think you could do whatever you want for a, for a living. So that really helped. Awesome. Um, so what has been a challenge you've had to overcome in your television career um, that you didn't necessarily anticipate happening? Wow. Um, uh, I, I don't know that. I think the biggest challenge is just getting that first job because, you know, I went to USC and I went to the, the film school there. And one of the things you learn almost immediately is that, that there's no path to employment. You know, it's like, like if you go to law school, you know that you're going to graduate and then you're going to get a job somewhere and then you're going to work there because you have a diploma. None of that mattered in the, in the film industry. It's really just sort of, and you find out very early on, it's who you know. And, uh, and weirdly, I got my first gig in animation because I didn't know anybody where I was going to be, which is, which is like, I brought my, my portfolio to the Ninja Turtles because they were looking for a storyboard cleanup artist. And my portfolio, I now realize looking back on it, was not really a good animation portfolio. It was like you could tell that I could draw, but I never had any animation experience really. Uh, you know, and it, it was a thing where he was like looking through and he found one thing that was a really clean line. He's like, okay. They, I think maybe you could do that because, it, but because I'd never worked for anybody before in the industry, he was like hemming and hawing, and I said, you know, I'm about to get on a plane this afternoon and go and house sit my parents' house, and, and watch my baby sister, you know, t t t while they're out of town, and I don't know anybody in that town, so I won't be going out, I won't be socializing with anybody. I will have all day, for like two weeks, to do this storyboard for you. And he said, oh, OK, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a shot. And then uh, you know, I, I did it. And then he just gave me work for, for, you know, for like a year after that. Just every week, I'd get another freelance gig from him. So That's hilarious. Oh, that's great. Now, you currently have two new seasons of Phineas and Ferb in the works. Yes. How many people are involved in producing an episode, and what is the creative process like? Oh, we don't even have everybody on staff yet. We have, I think, six people in the writer's room, and plus me and Swampy. Um, and, uh, and we have two directing teams started off. I think we'll end up with like 60 or 70 people on staff. I'm doing another show at the same time. I'm doing Hamster and Gretel at the same time. And that we have like 60 or 70 people, uh, people on staff. And the, the process is a long, drawn out <laughs> process. It, uh, it's uh, a little like the slaves building the pyramids. There's a lot of people that work on it for a very long time. Uh, it takes about 10 months to make, a, to make one episode from start to finish. So the stuff that we're writing right now won't be done for 10 months. And it probably won't be on the air for a year at least. And uh, so it's going to be, 
it's going to be crazy. But uh, but but it, there's there's just you know you write and then you give it to storyboard artists who put uh, who do the visuals of it and they do sort of like a, a, a like it's sort of like a comic book version of you know so, so you get to see what the shot looks like and what the characters are doing but it's just the main poses and then somebody else cleans that up and then we, then we do a rewrite and then people people do that and then people have to take everything that's drawn in those storyboards and design it so that we can send it to an overseas studio who's going to do the in-between animation and every artist that's working on it knows that this is the plate of food that they're holding and the, you know so they have to design that plate of food Any, anything that gets moved anything that's in the background gets designed in the background and uh and then we send over like a model pack so that at all the 20 or so artists that are working on the animation overseas are w looking at the same materials so that the, so that if one artist is passing so, you know if the character is passing something from one one scene to the other and they're being drawn by two different artists we want it all to look the same right right well that seems like a lot of work yes um, so what advice would you give to aspiring creatives who want to work in the entertainment industry um, I th th just just work just do whatever you can to 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 work and even the stuff that you're not getting paid for is work that is going to be beneficial to you I was I was uh, I did I did a comic strip uh, at USC before before you know uh, getting into the industry and it got me my first writing gig because they were looking for someone who could draw and write and I just gave him a book of my comic strip and and he looked at it and laughed at the first three pages and said, okay, you're hired. It's the easiest uh, interview I, I'd ever had. But, but, but everything you do is helping you be better at what, at, at, at what you're doing. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's just all about working and getting, getting work done so that you can do better work later, I think. That's great advice and a good yeah. perspective to have. Now, there's one more thing we have to ask before wrapping up, and that is, would you be willing to say Perry the platypus in your Dr. Doofenshmirtz voice. Uh, I think the audience and ourselves would really appreciate well, it. Well, what I usually say is, a platypus? <gasps> Perry the platypus, because I don't recognize him unless he has his hat on. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Inner child healed. <laughs> thank you so much for being sure. here with us today. And thank you to our viewers. Be on the lookout for more MTN content and be sure to attend Dan's lecture this evening.